In this video, I'm going to show you how to use audio clips and work with audio clips in Traction. To get started, I've opened the browser. I'm just going to pull in a drum beat. It's a WAV file, and I can just drop it right on the track. Well, wait, before I do that, let's just take a look at this. This is 90 beats per minute. If I click here in the browser, it actually shows me that it's 90 beats, approximately 90 beats per minute. In order to set that up in Traction, then just click over here where it actually shows the tempo and then you can change it right here. So I'm just gonna change that to 90 so that this better matches what we're working with. So I'll then drag this in here, drop it in, kind of snaps in place. And then let's just see what we've got. All right, that's pretty interesting. Now the core part of the beat is right in here. This is a crash here, and we've got kind of a little beat with a kind of a fill leading into what I would call the core groove in this right here. So one of the things that you'll find in Traction is that if we have snap turned on, which we do right down here, you can see snap is on. As I drag from the header part, then I can position this and snap it in like this. If I want to drag to another track, I can do the same thing. Grab from the header part. When I get the cursor up over the header, it looks like a hand. And then I can drag it down here. And I have snap on, so that kind of stays synchronized mostly, but it's pretty easy to get it out of sync. Now, let me turn snap off. Q, turn snap off. Now, if I drag down to another track, it's easy to get it a little bit out of sync. So I'm, a, I'm a rearranging things. I'm dragging things track to track. You don't really necessarily want that to happen. I'm gonna undo that move. So constrained dragging is done by holding down shift. So I'm gonna hold shift while I drag track to track and you'll see that I can't get it out of sync that way. So adding shift constrains track to track drags. So we'll get this back up here. I'm gonna put this back right here. Now we've got tools on the header. This is a trim tool, this open hollow triangle is a trim tool. So if I pull that back, I can trim. And I've got one on the back of the clip as well, so I can trim the back part of the clip. So let's trim this back to where we're actually focused only on this one groove part of the beat. To do that, I'm going to put snap back on. That will keep me framed up here nicely on the beat or on the bar. And see, now I've trimmed it up to where I've got just that one piece of this. So let's listen to that. Now, if we want to loop playback over that, I just need to bring it back here to bar zero, and then I'll drag in the out marker to line that up. And then I've got looped playback on, so let's play back and see how that sounds. Works really well. So I'll rewind the cursor at the beginning. Next thing I want to do is show you how to do a split or to split this up into more parts. So to split, you position the cursor where you want to make the split, like say right here, and then you use the forward slash and that just puts a split right in there. And if I want to make another split, say split out this one snare beat, then I can make another split right here. So that's how you make a split. Now, if you select any clip, when you have a multiple selection like that, you'll see it clears the selection and selects the single clip. If you want to select multiple clips at the same time, you hold down Option and you can use the Marquee tool like this to make a multiple selection. I showed you that in the previous video. The other thing you can do is use the Escape key to clear the selection. Now, if you wanted to duplicate a clip, like say we wanted to convert this into a drum fill, then you can just use the D key. I'm going to delete this part of it. You can delete any clip by selecting it and hitting delete. Now you can use the duplicate, which I have programmed to the D key like this, and it basically copies and pastes in one keyboard action. So then that sounds like this. Or we can take this one out. That's kind of cool. So that's how you cut, delete, and duplicate clips. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna take a look at some of the other tools that you have available on the clip. 
Now we can fade in right here. This is the fade handle. So you can bring a fade in and a fade out that you can adjust using those handles. Down here in the properties, you can select the shapes for the fade in and the fade out. Like here's a faster fade in shape, a faster fade out shape, or an S-shaped fade out shape. You can bring those in like this. You've got the hollow arrows that do the overall trimming. Now at this level, I'm gonna to need to turn snap off in order to do that smoothly. So I'll turn snap off. And I can use those tools like that. But now you notice that this is actually falling a little behind the beat. Well, I can use the slip tool, which is this solid color. Any of the solid color tools work like slip edit tools. And what it does is if you drag from there, it actually slips the waveform inside of the window of the clip. So I'll turn snap off and you can see I can adjust then the waveform itself. So this really is great for this kind of editing. So I can get that beat coming right on the downbeat. Like that. And then I can adjust the end of it like this. So that gives you a lot of ability to do detailed editing with this. So that's slip editing. There's also slip editing tools here. This will slip the waveform back, but keep the length of it the same, or keep the back end of it planted like this. So you can actually move the transient part, but keep the back end length of the clip the same. This does kind of the opposite. Pushes the whole waveform back while it shrinks up the size of the wave like that. Those are useful. I probably use these solid color arrows less than any of the other tools. So just to kind of summarize, you use this to move the entire clip. You use this for trimming the front edge. You use this for trimming the back edge of the clip. And then you use this for slip editing. Now this one here will actually move the window of the clip around the waveform, kind of like this. Another useful and interesting tool that you have to work with. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, just use the up arrow a few times to get zoomed out. That's uh, really kind of truncated there. I'm gonna go and lengthen that out a little bit. I also might wanna use this particular beat instead. So we can go here put in a split, just drag the cursor here, put in a split, and then I can copy using Command C. That would be Control C on a PC. That copies it to the clipboard. And then I can go out to any area where I might wanna use that, put the cursor in, and paste it. That's Control V or Command V, and then I could also reuse that again for these other beats. Maybe shorten it up a little bit. Hit D to duplicate it. And let's listen to it. Now that you can see this is coming early to give kind of a heavy feel, but if we want to actually go in here and start to adjust the feel of this beat, then can just slip that back a little bit. Now one other cool thing you can do is actually adjust the gain of these individual hits. So once you've done an edit like this, you might want these not all to be the same strength. So you can adjust the volume quite easily by clicking on it and going down here to the clip gain property down here in the properties. So you can see they're all set to zero. If I grab this slider and just back it off a little bit, Or you might want to make this one here quite a bit weaker. And that this one here wound up too wimpy. You could also click right on here and I could just put zero to bring that back up. All right, so then when you've got something that you like, you can select all of these clips. 
So one way to do that is on the track itself, you can right click on the track and do select all clips on this track like that. Or I'll hit escape to change that. Or you could do a multiple selection by clicking the first one, holding down shift and clicking on the last one. And then once you've done that, you've got a render clips option down here. The one that I use the most under here is the one called render selected clips and replace them. That will render them all into one solid selection like this. Now it goes through this intermediate dialog box and normally all you have to do is just hit render here and it will do it. Now we've got one solid clip. Now we've got our beat that we've created. If we hit D, we can duplicate it, or we could even loop it if we wanted to. If I select multiples of these and hit A to set the loop over it, I can listen to my creation. Now let me undo that. Now another cool thing we can do is reverse a clip. So we can reverse the audio within a clip. We'll try reversing this very last one. So you'll see a property right here, it's called reverse. You can turn that on or off. As soon as you turn it on, you see that it reverses up here. Now another thing you might want to do is a crossfade. So I'm gonna zoom in and make a couple of clips overlap. So we'll make this one here, we'll stretch that back to where it's overlapping this other clip. And then we can simply crossfade these to eliminate glitching by just clicking right here where it says apply crossfade. And you can see it puts a crossfade, a nice crossfade right in there. Now, another way to do that is to take an overlapping clip. Let me adjust this a little bit more. And now that it's overlapping, and then just hit X, and it will also put in a crossfade. Now we can also do drag crossfades if we have that turned on. So I'm gonna turn drag crossfade on right down here. And for this clip, you'll see that if I drag it over the other clip, it will automatically create a crossfade. And there's a setting for that as you build your tracks and create clips you can have the drag crossfade on by default for all new clips. And then that makes that very easy if you wanna do that overlapping crossfade right away. But if you don't have that on, then all you need to do is drag across and hit X and it will create a crossfade or it'll adjust a new crossfade. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour of using the editing tools within individual audio clips and traction. It's a lot of fun, powerful tools. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.